All right, it is our weekly release, but this week again, we don't have a release for you guys, but we have Yuritsa. What are we gonna see right now, Yuritsa? Hello, we got in a nest full of baby chimney swifts. So I'm going to feed them and see how cute and weird and crazy they are. Awesome. Um, chimney swifts are insectivores. So they usually fly around catching insects in the air. They nest in chimneys a lot of the time or caves. Um, so these guys fell from um, someone's chimney. Um, the nest fell down and everything. And um, hey, Chris. unfortunately they weren't too keen into re-nesting and they brought them in to get checked out. And we're gonna see if they're gonna be into any worms right now. They all are doing okay. can hear our crows in the background. We are in the clinic. Oh, youngest one's a little hungry. Let's see, here we go. And about how old are these guys, you think? Uh, these guys are just like a couple weeks or so. Uh, you can see this guy's the youngest, so he probably hatched last compared to the others. So they look like dinosaurs, like they're very weird looking when they're babies. They're very loud, usually, once they get going. Well, not too crazy now. Um, but you can see that their feet are made clinging to the sides of things, so once they start getting out of the nest, they'll just climb on the sides. And yeah, these are little nestling chimney shrimps. And so are we going to raise them until we can um, we're release them to or? Trying to maybe renest, um, but it sounds like the finders are going to be closing off their chimney. Um, so I'm not sure if we will be able to, so we may end up uh, raising them until they're good to go. Wow, so incredible. Thank you so much, Yuritza, for letting us take a peek at this feeding. And. Um, See you later. Bye. And now we are going to go into the office, um, and I'm going to show you guys some hooks that we get in and save. So you can get an idea of the different injuries we see. We, get, we save a lot of these hooks, so I'm just going to show you guys them real quick. So let me get this straight. So, so brown pelicans, B-R-P-E, that's a brown pelican. So this lure was found in the side rump. So um, this is a really big hook. This was found in a brown pelican at the Sea Aquarium. So we have different boxes of these hooks and anything that we find in the birds, um, sometimes bows and, bow and arrows, or arrows um, and bullets and stuff like that. I'm just showing you guys hooks today. Um, this was a brown pelican hook in the esophagus. Um, this was, you know, a weight, a sinker um, found in the wing. Um, these are some brown pelican hook, hooks found in the stomach of brown pelicans. So we also have some other birds. Um, this was found in a pelican at Hallover. Um, this was a hook found again in the stomach. 
So this was one of the original reasons that we were founded to treat pelicans from hook and line injuries. And as you can see, these are all from this year and this is just a handful of them. Um, this was a hook found in the back of a brown pelican. And then we also have some other birds So, all this hook and line was found on a royal turn. Um, the hook was in its thigh. This great blue heron was found at the Miami Shores Country Club, um, entangled with all of this around it. Um, another great blue heron was found with all this fishing line. Um, and lure. Um, this is a royal, this is from a royal turn as well. The hook, there was a hook in its neck and in its stomach. So as you can see, it's not just, hey Kiki, um, not just brown pelicans, all of the, all of our birds that we have around our waterways in Miami are subject to these injuries, which is why it's so, so important that if you are out fishing to, um, dispose of these properly, sorry. Um, royal Tern swallowed a hook. Um, Northern Gannet. So these guys um, are more pelagic. Um, and yeah, so these are, these are just a few. Um, yeah, so Chris says that the average time in care is about 30 days for a pelican with fishing tackle entanglement. So it's not um, a small task, especially if they've come in with multiple hooks. So if you are out fishing and you accidentally hook a pelican, reel it in and bring it to us. Don't just cut the line. We've had birds come in with 10 hooks in them and stuff like that. So obviously the longer it takes for them to get treatment, the you know harder it is for them to recover. And now I'm gonna show you guys. Um, are we seeing a reduction in hook and line injuries? I think we're seeing a reduction in pelican intakes in general, um, but we are um, working on a campaign and we started to put signs around marinas in Miami-Dade County, bilingual signs, um, really encouraging people to not, not to cut the line and to bring them to us. So. Um, I think there's just a lot of people out fishing and a lot of times um, we're not throwing them away properly. So we hope that we're um, making a difference by talking to folks about it, but we definitely still get a ton of birds in with these injuries. So I'm gonna show you guys Mowgli, who a lot of you guys have met before. Um, this is our Eastern Screech Owl ambassador animal. And if you are still working remotely, she can come to your Zoom meeting. So I can share a link with that afterwards on how you can have Mowgli come and maybe cheer up your office mates um, if they're sick of seeing their pet, pet dog or cat. Um, but Mowgli came to us about four years ago with a broken wing bone and of course, our goal is to release these animals back out into the wild, but her injury, um, she can't really fly long distances anymore and she was deemed unreleasable. And so that's why we have her with us, bring her out to schools a lot and people really love her and want her as a pet. It's illegal to have these guys as a pet. We have a special permit. You can go to our website though and adopt her. Um, a symbolic adoption um, or like I said you can have her in your zoom meeting so we're still working on our reopening procedures it's probably gonna be a little while before you can come see her in person but, but we'll be highlighting her um, in our weekly calls in the future as well as some of our other ambassador animals so thank you guys so much the chimney swifts were super cool um, and as you can see, it's really, really important to dispose of all of your fishing gear properly because this is injuring wildlife. This was just from 2020, 
and this was just a handful of cases. We have a whole box of um, stuff from last year that we got in. We generally keep these things, so um, we definitely need to do better as a community. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.